Hello YouTube, and welcome back to part two of my Tamiya Kawasaki Hien build. In this video, I'm going to hide the lovely Ares cockpit that we built inside the fuselage. I'll show you how I put all the parts together. We'll go through how I painted the bare metal finish with all clad, how I painted all the small little squiggles and mottles along the fuselage, and you'll see how I masked and painted all the other markings as well. Except for the Z on the tail, I was not in the mood to mess with that. You may have noticed that this is the second time I built this airplane. I built it a couple years ago, but it was the Hasegawa kit. If you're deciding between the two, definitely get the Tamiya one. It's a newer mold and it's just got a lot more details on the parts and it fit together extremely well. Part one of this series has all the details for the building and the painting of the resin cockpit. So I pulled a few clips from that video in case you haven't seen it. It just doesn't feel right starting this out without building a cockpit. At this point, I've already puttied and sanded the seam line on the drop tanks before spraying it with Mr. Surfacer. Next, I'll do a little bit of random pre-shading with black, followed by a base coat of this Japanese army gray, which seems a lot more green than gray. Once it's dry, I'll spray it with chipping fluid, followed by a top coat of a slightly lighter version of this JA gray. This way I can chip the top coat and kind of get a multi-tone, worn out look on these drop tanks. I also use the same technique on the propeller, except with the color brown. In preparation for the natural metal finish, I spray a coat of gloss black, followed by a couple rounds of polishing to turn it into a glassy surface. After polishing, I did wash it with a damp cloth just to get all the residue off and make sure there was nothing stuck in the panel lines. I'll show you the first couple coats of polished aluminum, but from there I kept adding and adding and adding, probably five or more coats. It dries super quick, so you can do it all in one session, there's no need to take a break, and you just keep going until it's however shiny you want it. This is actually a really good plane to start out on if you want to practice for a natural metal finish or if you're a little nervous on it, because there's so much camouflage and other markings that are all over it you can kind of use that to hide some of the mistakes you make. The Hinumarus, or the red circles on the wings, are simple enough to paint on there if you have a rotary cutter. I used the decal to help measure the radius that I needed to cut, and then I used the circle cutout to situate it on the wing properly before placing the outline around it and removing the center of the circle. In 
In order to paint the blue stripe, I cut the decals out to the exact dimensions that I needed, uh, taped them on, and then masked around them. I'm using Aqua Gloss as a clear coat because it's water based and using something like Mr. Color Super Clear uh, could react poorly with the all clad and just ruin the finish. Some of these decals that are very thin lines have a clear center to them and that makes it a lot easier to put it on the model and get it situated properly but you also risk the silvering of that clear film. So in these cases, I try to cut it away as much as I can. Unfortunately, you can see it does lead to challenges when you go to put it on, but with some patience, you can usually straighten it out. I did quite a bit of experimenting and mixing off to the side in order to find the best air pressure and paint thinner ratio that would work for this camo scheme. You'll notice in many cases I start the airflow off to the side before I bring it over the model. That's because sometimes there's some paint dried on the tip, especially since I'm using Tamiya and we all know how quickly that stuff likes to dry and you don't want to get any splatter. If you do get some splatter, you can usually make the camo piece a little bit larger Although there's of course a limit as to how big you can make it and have it still keep with the theme of the scheme that you're painting. I split this camo painting up into multiple sessions because my airbrush finger would get tired, my eyes would start to hurt, and each time I restarted, I remixed the paint and the thinner and had to do a little bit of practice and a little bit of tweaking off to the side. Even though the instructions on the Microsoft bottle say do not touch after you apply to the decal, I still like to take a Q-tip and press it in to the model several times. That really seems to do a better job of getting it to drop down into those panel lines. And then sometimes if I feel like the decal really didn't sink into the line enough, I'll put a brand new blade on my X-Acto knife and go ahead and slice it along the line. At this point, I have already coated the entire plane with aqua gloss and I will just slap on the oil wash. I know there's many opinions about clear coating the natural metal finish, but the main reason I do it is because I think it gives an added layer of protection and durability, really helps protect against scratches, and I don't think that it takes away a lot from the look that I've got going here. Back to the drop tank, I'll use the same oil wash that I used for the rest of the plane, except here I don't try to wipe it all away. I kind of dab at it because I'm going for a grungy, dirty look, like it's been filled up a lot of times with fuel. It's just kind of sloppy and leaking and got stains all over the place.
Here's the finished drop tank that I sprayed with a matte varnish already. If you look closely on the sides, you can see some of the tonal variation from the chipping fluid and the two shades of gray that we used earlier in the build. I wanted to sand the bottom of the tires where they come into contact with the ground. And so in order to figure out the exact spot to sand, I dry fit the landing gear in place, painted white on the surface I'm working on, and then set the plane on top of it. So it would leave a couple white spots on the very bottom of each tire, right where I wanted to sand. Don't be fooled, it took more than two strokes with my sanding stick, but you get the idea where I'm headed. I sealed all the colored areas with the matte varnish. That includes all the camo squiggles. Did I get a little bit of overspray on the metal finish? Probably. Does it bother me? No. As usual, I got halfway done with the rigging, then snipped it incorrectly, and so I got to do everything twice. Also, when you're working with the super glue, sometimes I did get a little bit of extra on the painted surfaces. As long as it's not too thick, you can just spray another layer of matte varnish over it and that'll get rid of the shiny glue. 